doing a series um, that we started a couple of weeks ago about worry and anxiety. Um, and as I was preparing, I was thinking about some of the things that really make me anxious and worrisome. And one of those things is hosting people. Now, I don't know who here just lives for having people come to visit them, right? Um, they just really enjoy the cooking, the cleaning, the prepping. Listen, I, my goal one day is to be like you. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now, I'm not there yet. Um, right now, I am the person who going to stress the whole week for a couple of days of having people over, right? I'm stressing about the prepping, so it's the rooms that need to be cleaned, the house, the house that needs to get cleaned, right? It's the food that needs to be prepared. So full disclosure, I don't really enjoy cooking. Um, so cooking for one, which is me, is a problem. Cooking for many more is even more of a problem for me, right? So these are all the things that I need to think about. And so I am stressing. My family will tell you, I will stress the whole week for those two, three days that the family is over. Um, and I... I have a lot of family in Peter Maritzburg, right? And so every now and again, we'll have an event where like a bunch of the family will come. And when they all come, they're all coming to where Amu is, which means Amu is the host of the family. <laughs> ah! um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and so I will stress and I'll be anxious the whole time. And then, so there's that work, right, the prep. And then there's the time of the people being there, right? So it's not just you having to tend to their needs while they're there, but you must also be present while they're there, right? So I actually really enjoy sitting with people and engaging with them, like it's my love language. I want quality time. So when my family's over, I just actually, in my heart of hearts, I just want to sit with them and just, we must just chat away the whole time. But there's, there's also the thing of like, but like people need to eat and they will want tea and coffee. And you know, I'm, I'm still a child technically. Right? And so the moms will come. And so they, they must still be taken care of, right? And still offer coffee and tea and water and, and all of the things, right? So it's the, it's the prep work. It's the tending of the guests while they're there. And then there's the post stuff, but we're not going to talk about that right now, right? Um, and so for me, I really feel like hosting stress and hosting anxiety is a real thing, right? The, the stress of having people come over and be guests in technically all of our homes um, but our home so just there was a particular story um, this one of one one event I think one of my uncles was getting married and all my family was coming over to Peter Maritzburg so everyone drives on the Friday evening and I mean I've already stressed the whole week so I'm tired because of stress right um, and then the people get there and then it's a good time and we're all out, it's the, the wedding is on Saturday, so we go to the wedding, it's beautiful, it's fun, we are dancing, we are singing, party, you know. Um, but then afterwards, now we must all come back home and there are dishes in the sink. So I don't know how other families are, right? But me growing up, I was told you will not sleep if there are dishes in the sink, right? You, the dishes must be washed. So we come home and my cousins were still out and about at the, at the venue, right? And I had come back with the moms. So now obviously I'm the youngest and the youngest must do the things, yes. So then, but like I'm exhausted, right? Like everyone else here, I'm really tired. And not only that, Sunday, me, I'm going to church. Everyone else here is gonna wake up when they want and they know go back to all the places that they come from. Um, but I, I'm waking up earlier than everyone else. So I was like, okay, cool, it's fine. You know, the, the then more perfectionist, perfectionist in me was just like, everything needs to be perfect all the time, right? So we definitely can't sleep with dishes and everything must be clean. But I'm so tired, and I remember like I walked to the kitchen, and I was just like, this is a lot, right? But I started washing the dishes, well, I was prepping to wash the dishes. But as I was doing that, I was like, there's no way. And you know when like you're so tired, you wanna cry? Like I was at that point, so I was just like, there's nothing in me that is making me able to do this. So I do what any sensible, lost born child does. I called my mom. I was like, mom, there's no way I'm doing this. I'm so tired. Like, just, I, I can't. There's, 
can someone else maybe come and do this? And my mom, bless her soul, she was like, oh no, relax, rest, it's okay. And I was just like, what household is this? This is not the house I grew up in, right? Um, but her response gave me so much relief. Um, and I was like, okay, then I don't, I don't have to keep trying so much, right? Um, and it was so relieving to me. And that has been my attitude since then. Right. Now I'm just like, oh, guys, when you come, it is what it is. I try my best. We're all working. You know, it. <laughs> so you'll find what you find. But the, the house is usually clean. So just so you know. <laughs> um, so anyway, so as I was reading through scripture, I was like, surely there is someone who's gone through something similar to me. And you know what? There is. There's a Bible character who went through something similar, and her name is Martha. So this morning, <laughs> so good. This morning we are going to be taking um, a look at Luke 10, um, and it's a story that many of us probably know um, about Martha and Mary. Um, and at this point in Scripture, you know, Jesus is he had already sent the twelve out, and they'd gone and come back, and now he was doing those final trips before the cross. Um, and so they passed through a village, um, and this is where we are introduced to Martha and Mary. So I'll read from Luke 10, verse 38. It says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Now, Having shared my story, you guys can see how much I relate with Martha, right? Me, I was the person who's like super frustrated, I'm over this, and Martha gets to that place, right? But it doesn't start, start out that way. In the beginning, we're in introduced to these two characters, and I was thinking about like, you know how someone is introduced to you, like that's what you remember about them, right? Thankfully, I can't remember anyone here at church how I was introduced to them, but I was thinking about, you know, um, the things that stand out about people is how we remember them, or the things that we are first told about people is what we remember remember about them. So like for example, it would be like, oh my goodness, the, the lady in the red dress, right? You will scan in your memory, who was wearing a red dress? Oyama technically is not wearing a red dress this morning, she's wearing a red jersey. But now you will scan in your head when I talk about someone wearing red, who was wearing red on Sunday, right? <laughs> Um, and so we're introduced to Martha and Mary very interestingly. Martha, we're told, is the one who welcomes Jesus in her home. Now, for people who don't know in the East, like this is a big deal, right? Um, welcoming people into your home in the East was seen as like a sacred thing, right? It's something that people will like are so excited and want to do. And the people who they welcome into their homes, they see those people as people who um, are sent by God. I mean, technically in this story, I mean, it's Jesus. So she, she's, she's not just bring, um, welcoming someone who has been sent by God. Like she's, she's inviting God himself into her home. So this is like a big, big deal, right? Um, but yeah, so they, they so the people who welcome these people, it is a joy for them to serve the people who come and visit them. And then Mary, um, we're just told that she's Martha's sister, but that she sat at the Lord's feet. Now, another thing about those times is that women weren't, it wasn't really their place eh, to be sitting and listening to the teacher teach. Um, Mary's place was actually in the kitchen preparing with Martha, right? So honestly, I kind of see where Martha's coming from. It's like, you also know the rules, you know the customs, um, the societal customs that actually exist, right? Um, but Mary isn't interested about societal norms in this moment. She's just like, oh my goodness, the teacher is here, I'm gonna sit with him and I'm gonna listen. 
And I love that Jesus was kind of the same, right? He didn't really care about social norms. Um, Jesus spoke to a Samaritan woman when Jews and Samaritans don't speak. Um, he, he, he sat with sinners and tax collectors when rabbis and teachers were known to really separate themselves from such people. Um, but Jesus did what other people didn't do, right? He broke social norms. And we see him continuing to do that by letting Mary continue to sit at his feet and listen to him. <clears throat> so Mary is doing what every good host Martha, sorry, is doing, well, actually Mary is kind of as well, right? She's doing the listening part. <laughs> She's doing the sitting part and, and, and being with the people. Um, but Martha's doing the heavy, the heavy lifting of um, making sure that the guests are fed and that they're tended to and that their needs are met, whether it's strict. Maybe they're cold, you know? She's probably getting them blankets. I don't know. Um, but she's, she's doing the heavy lifting, the heavy work of the doing. Um, and sometimes, and oftentimes, we're like that too, um, where we will do, 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 and go, 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 um, and ensure that people's needs are met. And we lose the, the importance of the value um, and lose and forget the aspect of sitting and being. So I, I did a couple of deep dives when I was going through this word and just trying to understand some terms, right? And we use a lot of terms, English language, we use all these words, and I'm sure in the general sense we know what they mean, right? Um, but I was so fascinated, or really interested by the word distracted. Um, because one could be like, she's not necessarily distracted, she's just doing what needs to be done. And it's not like the things that need to be done are bad. In fact, there are good things that need to be done, right? Um, but why distracted? So I went to the dictionary, and I was like, what does distracted mean? Right? And from the Cambridge Dictionary, I found that it means nervous or confused because you're worried about something. So Martha, thank you, Martha, it, it wasn't just a thing of she's absentmindedly moving around and doing things that need to get done, right? She, she wasn't even in that space of this is what's happening in my space right now. I'm getting a privilege or um, partnering or doing or experiencing the privilege of serving people. Right. She, was, she was worried, and I'm sure there were other things on her mind as well, um, especially the fact that Mary was not helping her. Um, <laughs> um, but we, we get anxious when we're distracted, right? When, when we are thinking about all the things that need to get done in our lives, when we're thinking about school, exams coming up, and the different modules that we need to get covered when we think about our finances, um, when we are wanting to ensure that our family relationships are doing well, but also they're not really, and there are other things that we need to get sorted as well. And so you create a to-do list in your head of all the things that you need to get done, right? Um, and that really sort of takes your mind away from the fact that Jesus is here still. Um, and the thing about being distracted is that we're thinking about things that need to get done, yes, but also we actually end up finding validation in those spaces, right? So for me, right, I, I'm a recovering perfectionist, so when my family would come, it was a thing of I want things to be perfect so that they have a, good, a really great experience of being home. But what in their experience did that do in my heart? Whoops. What did that do to me? It made me feel like, oh, man, I'm a bomb host. Right? I, I'm the hostess with the mostest. Right? I'm not the hostess with the mostest. My friends will tell you, I will actually be like, okay, guys, this is your home. Do what you need to do. I'm out. So that, that's where I am now. <laughs> But it was the validation that I needed of I'm a good host, right? And I needed something that would put, put my, pull my ego up, right? Because that's what it is, getting validation from all these different spaces. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, guys. Well, <laughs> 
we we get distracted and focused and invested in things that are good, right? You need to take care of your family, which means you need to work, right? And unfortunately, the higher the position you have, the more money you earn, which means the better you can take care of your family. However, even in that, sometimes we need to question, why do we want to earn a certain bracket, right? What does that do for you? Yeah. Is this because then your friends will be like, ah, man, this person is able to buy this and this and this and this. Um, yo, they've got all the, all the Apple products. All the Apple products are together. The things are aligning. Again, nothing wrong with all the products aligning, right? But what is it doing in my heart? Why is that so important to me? In our society, there is this thing of we have to do so that we can be and therefore have, right? So I need to be um, at the top of the class so that I can be seen as the smartest person and um, also get a bursary maybe, which is good. But what does that do for me? That means I am accepted maybe. Maybe I'm seen as better. Um, maybe I'm loved more, or that's how I experience love. Those are the spaces in which I experience love. But I love that in Jesus, it is the opposite, right? We are loved first, so we are, um, we have, therefore we can do. So it's from the outflow of what we have and what Jesus validates in us that we are able to do. And that's what Martha was missing in this moment, right? She was busy doing all the things, getting all the things done, but her heart and her mind weren't in the space of, like, Jesus is here. This is a big moment for me. I can be receiving from this man, right? He can be validating spaces in me that really need validation. Um, he doesn't, and, and, and the way that Jesus responds, he says, Martha, you're anxious and troubled by many things. He's not invalidating anything. He's not invalidating that she's busy with the good things that need to get done, right? But he's saying, your presence is not with me. You are here in the same space, but you're not here in the same space as me. And that's what we need to be. So it wasn't that Martha was far from Jesus. I mean, if you're in the same house, you're moving in the same, same space, kind of, right? But her heart and her mind wasn't focused on the fact that, she, that Jesus is there and she's serving Jesus. So the thing about my mom responding, relax, right? <laughs> That was, such a, that was such a freeing thing for me because then it was like, I don't need to do too much, right? My family will accept the space however it is and I'm not valued by how this space looks like, right? And, and, and when I wasn't in that space, I was frustrated because the people, my cousins, <clears throat> who I thought and knew and felt like should be helping me weren't, weren't doing that. Like they weren't, we weren't laboring together. It was just me by myself. Um, and, and, and Mary, it, for her, it was the same way. But when you do that, you, you, your perspective and your, your vision is so focused on what's not happening in the space that you're in, right? So my cousins are not here with me washing the dishes. For, for Martha, it's my sister is not doing what needs to be done with me, right? Um, and we forget and miss out on what is actually happening in that space. Yeah. With my family was the fact that my family was there and I don't get to see them often. Our lives are so busy, I don't even get to call them that's also a bit on, on my fault, but okay, we are going to move from there. <laughs> but it's like, I don't get to talk to them often, right? I don't get to see them. I don't get to experience their presence often. Um, and the same with, with Martha. She doesn't, probably didn't get to see Jesus often as well. She didn't get to sit at his feet and, and hear what he has to say very often. Um, but she was missing the point of Jesus being here because she was so zoned in on what is missing.
So as we've been going through this series, the scriptures come up a little bit and again and again, right? Matthew 6 verse 33 says, But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. As we, as we come to a place where we're no longer zoned in and focused on the things that are missing, and we come to see that, oh, Jesus is here with me still. Right? As we come to a place where we are seeking God and his kingdom first, all these things, I mean, if you read the scripture above, right, um, Jesus was talking about, he's like, um, the lilies are clothed and like all the things in nature have all the things that they need to be, right? And we need that too. But beyond the food and the clothing, like we need validation. We need to know who we are. We need um, community. We need relationships. We need all these other, other things. I don't know if animals and nature need, so I can't speak for them. But <laughs> all these other things that we as humans really need to be able to function and thrive in society, right? And, and this scripture says, as you do that, the Lord will bring the things that you need in those spaces, right? He will fill up the spaces and the, and the things that you are needing. Um, and I was looking and I was like, oh, even Jesus, like his focus was on God and what God is saying and what God is doing. And in that space, like he was validated by God. Um, he wasn't validated by whether the Pharisees and um, the, the, the Israelites accept him. He was focused on like, the Lord knows me. He sees me. He loves me. And I'm doing what he's called me to. Therefore, all is well with me. And so for me, I've had to learn to come to a place where I'm like, when things are not well in my soul and in my spirit and I'm getting frustrated by things, I'm always like, wait, why, why am I here? How did I get here? What validation am I getting from this space? But also, what is my devotion to Jesus looking like? What is my time with Jesus? Am I being like Mary sitting at his feet? Or am I being like Martha and, and using up my time to do, do, do? And doing is good. Doing for the Lord, even better. There's a scripture that says that all that we do, we should do as, though, um, as, as worship unto God. And so it's not invalidating the goodness of the doing. But it's rather asking in the moments when you are now frustrated that you're not getting the job, that's uh, the promotion that you want. Um, even though you've been putting the extra hours, you've been doing the overtime, you've been doing your manager's work as well. Uh, the manager, sometimes they slack. They're human, Shem. It's okay. <laughs> not, not my managers. No, 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 not my, my managers are great, guys. <laughs> I'm the best managers. Um, but it's the reality of, of being human, right? We're not going to do extremely well in all things. Um, and so there are areas in our lives that are lacking. But when we come to a place where now it is extremely frustrating for us and our, we are becoming bitter because of the frustrations that exist, because of the places that are lacking in other people, right? We lose sight of what, um, what is there and the invitation that God is bringing in our lives. Um, there's a commentary that I, that I found, and Charles Spurgeon said something so beautiful about the act of Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. And Jesus says that it was like Mary had chosen the good portion. I'm imagining that he's speaking about the, 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 the different parts of um, hosting people. And he's like, she's, what she's doing is even better than what you are doing which is good, but it's, this is better. This, sitting at my feet is better. Um, and so Charles Spurgeon says, imagine not that to sit at Jesus' feet is a very small and meaning thing. It means peace for they who submit to Jesus, find peace through his precious blood. It means holiness for those who learn of Jesus, learn no sin, but are instructed in things lovely and of good repute. It means strength, for they that sit with Jesus and feed upon him 
are girded with his strength. The joy of the Lord is their strength. It means wisdom. For they that learn of the Son of God understand more than the ancients because they keep his statutes. It means zeal. For the love of Christ fires hearts that live upon it. And they that are much with Jesus become like Jesus so that the zeal of the Lord's house eats them up. Isn't that amazing? Sitting at the feet of Jesus is peace, it's holiness, it's strength, it's wisdom, and it's zeal. Passion for Jesus. I would have added as well <laughs> that it means identity for they who submit to Jesus find who they are destined to be. It means truth for those who hear from Jesus, learn that their earthly experience isn't the end, but there's a hope beyond what we see now. It means purpose. For those that sit with Jesus and feed upon him are commissioned with a great mission, to love God with everything in them and to love people by introducing them to him. It means restoration. For they that learn of the Son of God, learn that he came to reconcile them to God and to love each other. It means love, for God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So we, this is the story of Martha and Mary, right? Um, where Martha was so distracted by all the things that need to get done and frustrated by the fact that other people are not helping her do those things. Mary, on the other hand, I'm sure is having the time of her life at the feet of Jesus. And she's probably completely forgotten, actually, that there's an aspect of having to serve in the space that she's in. But I was reading the scripture, and, and I was wondering, so how do, we, how do we respond to the story? And there are three types of people that I actually thought of and saw in the story. There are people who don't even have Jesus in the house. Right, um, and for those people, I want to assure you that Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Right? He wants to come in. And then there's some of us who are Martha's, actually doing all the things, and we're getting tired as well because there's a lot of doing, and the doing is not getting less. Actually, it feels like it's, there's more doing to get done. The invitation is for you to come sit. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. So the invitation is for us to come sit at the feet of Jesus. Receive from him. And I don't know this morning what it is you might be needing. Maybe you are needing some of the things that Charles Spurgeon, Spurgeon and myself have spoken into. Maybe you're needing peace. Maybe you're needing to learn how to walk in holiness. Maybe you're needing strength, wisdom. Maybe you're needing a new passion for Jesus. Right? Your passion's kind of died down a little bit. Maybe you need your identity to be spoken into, for God to validate you in ways that you've been trying to get validated, but it's not working. Maybe you're trying to find your purpose. One of the big questions on, on earth that people have, why am I here? What am I doing with my life? Maybe you're needing restoration for yourself, in your mind, in your heart. You're asking God for restoration in your family. Or maybe you're just needing to experience the love of God. Come and sit. But also maybe you're Mary and you've just only been sitting and that's all you do. Just sit. I want to encourage you to serve. Hear from the Lord and serve in the spaces that he's, he's enabled you to serve. Right? But I want to I wanna pray. I want to pray for us this morning. Specifically the Marthas. And I'm going to ask that we would stand. So 
So I don't know which person you are or what it is that you're needing from the Lord. But I know that as we come sit at the feet of Jesus, he's able to fill our souls and fill us up in the places that we need him most. Um, earlier this morning we were singing Vini, right? and, and we were saying we will abide in you, we will rest in you, we will sit with you, um, we will draw from you, Jesus. And so even now, in this moment, I'm going to encourage you to pray for yourself because you know the situations that you're in. But I'm also going to pray for us. Thank you for the privilege of being able to sit at your feet. And Father, thank you that you see beyond what we give out. That you see where our hearts are at, where our minds are. And that you see beyond our frustrations and know what we really need. Thank you, Father, that we can be assured of the fact that sitting at your feet is what we need most. You said it's what's necessary for us to be able to live on this earth, Lord, and do what you've called us to. Lord, we're sorry for just doing only and not taking the time to, to be with you, to sit with you, where we've allowed the multiple distractions that exist, the, the wanting to care for our friends and our family, to do a good job, to show up, even for ourselves, Lord, that that has taken a greater priority in our lives than being at your feet. So Lord, I pray this morning, Father, that you would meet everyone the place that they're at. Where we are needing validation, where we're needing strength and joy, where we're needing new hope, Lord God, I pray, Father, that as we sit with you, that, Father, you would fill those cups that, Lord, there'd be an overflow. Holy Spirit, won't you come? Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name.